Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision lecture series. This is lecture 5 part 2. In this lecture we are going to continue talking about feature descriptors and matching. In the previous lecture we saw how um, there are different interest points which are basically feature detectors that, we, that can be chosen one over the other depending on your application. There are corner Harris, um, Harris, de Harris uh, corner detectors there is difference of Gaussians which is um, an approximation of Laplacian of uh, Gaussian pyramids and um, at the end we also saw maximally stable extremal regions which is uh, robust about detecting um, asymmetric regions. Uh, so depending on the application you can choose one over the other. In this lecture we are going to continue talking about how uh, we can describe those specific feature uh, detect uh, the detected features and later on we can see how to match them there are certain criteria about matching also because it's possible that there are multiple matches available and how to get rid of the um, outliers how to get rid of uh, mismatches so we are going to talk in short about all of these things so let's see So in this lecture, mainly we will start uh, talking with the uh, scale invariant feature transforms. Uh, until now, we saw how different scales and um, orientations matter and how we can detect features at various scales using Laplacian of Gaussian. Uh, the uh, uh, difference of Gaussians is uh, an approximation of a Laplacian of Gaussian. And uh, how scale, uh, feature scale is also important and how the orientation of these features uh, matter. Uh, and in this lecture we are talking about that. So we are going to do uh, a basic review of a feature detection algorithm here. Uh, what we basically do is we compute first uh, the local derivatives in the horizontal, mm, sorry my mistake, not local derivatives but global derivatives across images in the x and y directions and then we compute the moment metrics and we can conv convolve each of these images with a larger Gaussian with different uh, kernel sizes to um, account for different scales and then we compute uh, different thresholds to find the featureness or the distinctiveness or the uh, interest points as we as we as we saw before uh, specifically in case of co Harris corner detectors it's uh, a corner cornerness uh, score is computed and then if the these detected features are above a, a predefined threshold uh, we report them or we consider them to be the distinctive features for example, MSER, maximally stable extremal regions. Uh, we move on to image descriptors now. Uh, there are in in uh, in Sizlewski, uh, reference book uh, four point one section, uh, chapter four, uh, first section. You will get a brief review of all these different descriptors. And in these links, specifically the the first link, you will get a very good. Uh, overview of the current available feature detectors. Uh, I recommend you to go to, uh, to these links and explore. Uh, so what are the main components we saw that detection description and matching are the three main components for feature uh, engineering and um, in this we are going to talk about how we can describe the features that we uh, detected. Um, basically, uh, we, we construct a matrix or a vector representation of the interest point that, uh, that, is interest, uh, that is important for us. So, for example, if these are the interest points, how to encode them into a vector form uh, is going to be discussed in this lecture. Um, basically, uh, histograms are uh, one way of representing local features. Uh, what happens is, when you uh, want to represent a, a particular neighborhood of uh, an image, histogram is a very good representation. It changes from uh, location to location and it gives you a good idea about the distribution of values in, in terms of textures and, um, and uh, contrast values. And it also tells you uh, uh, about the orientations of uh, the gradients there, even the depths, colors, and things like that. So. Uh, in image representation, usually uh, we st uh, a histogram is a very good uh, way of representing in a vector form or in a, uh, in a matrix form 
what your values are uh, distribu uh, the distribution of your values in a given local uh, in a given local neighborhood so what is sift sift is a scale invariant feature transform the whole pipeline is called a scale invariant feature transform there are multiple steps to it first we compute the local uh, histograms of oriented gradients uh, we will come to that later on and then we find difference of gaussians in different scale spaces taking the maximum uh, uh, detected scale uh, sorry uh, taking the scale where we detect the maximum value of the feature point and that becomes our, our target scale and then we do some pro processing steps uh, including position interpolation and uh, we also discard some low contrast points which are uh, which we consider to be outliers there are certain measures to it and we also eliminate some points along the edges then we also do orientation estimation doing some normalization techniques to uh, orient our features in a particular direction uh, or the dominant direction and then we do a descriptor extraction um, where we uh, finally create a an n-dimensional feature vector or a matrix to represent the the feature point. Uh, basically, why we use histograms is because uh, histograms are not too sensitive about uh, um, local layouts, and therefore uh, histograms are preferred over uh, exact values. So, uh, descriptor extraction for SIFT is so given a key given a key point with uh, a particular scale and orientation uh, it could be any key point that we detected in the previous uh, methods using MSER or even corner or even edges and so on and so forth and we pick the scale of the image where which matches the, which matches closely the estimated scale okay and then we resample the image to match that orientation uh, and the next step would be to subtract the detector orientation from the vector to give invariance to general image rotation. So what does this mean actually? Uh, in, on the left, you have you you can see a lot of arrows present in the image. Uh, these are de uh, detected feature orientations, um, orientation of the features detected, uh, and there are a lot of these. And uh, what we do is we pick uh, for a particular feature. Uh, vector or of a particular feature point, we detect the scale in which this uh, feature is uh, uh, detected, and then we resample the image uh, for the, for that particular scale, and then we compute orientations uh, or the gradients of uh, these orientations across uh, this uh, detected feature point, and then we do. Uh, a binning or a key point descriptor. We generate the descriptor of that uh, feature point using this computed image gradients at that particular location. And then uh, and the next step would be to compute uh, orientation histogram. So let's say this is your or original uh, histogram, oriented histogram that you have computed. What what you do here is um, you compute dominant uh, oriented um, gradient direction. This arrow, black arrow, represents the dominant. Uh, gradient direction across all these um, line segments present here and on the bottom you can see a distribution of the direction um, of the oriented uh, gradients uh, and we adjust this such that the dominant uh, direction is um, uh, normal uh, is uh, is along the uh, along the uh, along the you know this vertical direction uh, along the dominant direction my mistake and then we um, and and accordingly the histogram here changes and we uh, and this way we are selecting the dominant orientation for that feature and then uh, we normalize this all values uh, to fix the orientation uh, for fix the oriented gradient uh, direction and once we do that uh, we create a uh, specifically for sift we create a 16 cross 16 window across that key point or the detected key point and then we compute the dominant uh, gradient orientations like we did in the previous slide for uh, for the four cross four uh, uh, matrices or the four cross four windows across and then we compute it for every uh, four cross four uh, windows uh, for in this 16 cross 16 window 
and then we compute their uh, dominant gradient magnitudes and orientation and when then we bin it into uh, eight bin histogram by adding their magnitudes respectively so what we have done essentially is um, uh, computed the dominant histograms here uh, sorry computed the um, gradient orientations here and adjusted it according to the dominant uh, uh, according to the dominant uh, gradient orientation and then we computed the um, uh, final no uh, and we normalized those uh, orientations and we stored their respective gradient magnitude in an in, a, in, a, in an eight bin histogram uh, essentially generating a 128 dimensional uh, vector okay so we move on okay uh, so so the yeah I, I forgot to mention how we how, how you calculate the 128 dimensions is for this 16 cross 16 window uh, there is a 4 cross 4 window for which for, uh, for each of this window you compute this um, gradient uh, magnitude and for uh, and then you distribute it into uh, an 8 bin uh, histogram values of these 8 different gradient directions okay Ah, uh, okay so maybe uh, a bit more explanation here maybe uh, it's not so clear so let's say uh, you have a feature point detected here okay and you have and you put this 16 cross 16 window uh, across this feature point and then you start computing gradient of histo uh, histogram of oriented gradients for four cross four windows which is represented here okay and in this histogram you select the dominant histogram and then you map that histogram along these eight different um, gradient directions okay so you choose or the pick the the most align uh, align the dominant uh, uh, gradient here in, in, along the direction of one of these eight uh, different directions okay and then you uh, and so for eight into uh, 16 will give you 128 um, uh, 128 128 dimensional vector uh, I hope this is clear ah yeah we also have it uh, a bit more explanation here uh, within each window basically you compute this uh, dominant direction of uh, the gradient and then you uh, along this eight direction and then you store it um, so it is when you compute this uh, histogram for each four cross four window uh, it's called a weighted magnitude that is added to the histogram okay it's a weighted magnitude so basically you multiply this along this and you get this uh, uh, weighted magnitude so what are the steps essentially you extract the 8 cross 16 values into a 20, 120 dimensional vector and this becomes your feature uh, descriptor in order to have illumination invariance um, so because these are so um, we have you have computed the vector which are based on the gradient orientations and gradient orientations are normally invariance to illumination uh, vari uh, illumination changes and therefore even if you have if you bump up the in, uh, input images value uh, with uh, b value or decrease its value across this uh, vector will not change because it's a, a gradient vector uh, also you, you have we normalized this uh, vector so that it becomes uh, robust to brightness changes and we also clamp all the vector values greater than uh, 2.2 to 0.2 to, to reduce the illumination effects also uh, and then we renormalize the whole vector a very good estimation uh, implementation of SIFT can be uh, uh, found in this uh, sources uh, I recommend you to specifically look into this uh, tutorial it's a very well guided tutorial if you uh, want to look at every step uh, in detail and here is the Lowe's original paper which was published in International Journal of uh, Computer Vision it was the most cited paper uh, up until 2011 in computer vision um, right now uh, there are other papers which are much much more cited already but 
before the era of deep learning uh, shift descriptors were very popular because they have applications uh, across object detections 3d uh, feature matching uh, tracking and a lot of things uh, an, uh, another uh, local descriptor called surf is uh, a direct implement uh, a direct um, it comes directly it's a successor of uh, shift which is a fast approximation of the shift idea basically it has an efficient computation by 2d box filters so basically they uh, re replace the gaussian filters with uh, 2d box filters and integral images and they uh, surf is uh, six times faster than shift uh, and it gives equivalent quality for object detection so if you are using for object detection uh, surf will give you s uh, similar quality of uh, detection as a shift and a six time improvement in uh, speed in in addition to f uh, a more e efficient and fast approximation of the original shift idea there is also a gpu implementation available um, you can you can check this out uh, as well it's a very nice uh, um, extension to shift. So let's uh, review our uh, local descriptors a little. So most features can be thought of uh, templates. Basically, you can think of them as um, doing a histogram or a count or a binning algorithm for the features that you detected or a combination of that. Uh, the most basic idea in the mind that comes is a histogram and therefore uh, when you have this image gradients, you compute um, the dominant gradient directions and then you, when you map them along this uh, eight different direction and then you choose this particular dominant direction for the particular window, that this is how you generate your key point descriptors. Um, as we already know, ideal descriptors like detectors should be robust and distinctive, um, compact and efficient, most available uh, descriptors fo focus on edge and gradient information because they are quite um, invariant to elimination changes even they are robust to um, scaling and, th and th things like that so colors are uh, rarely used usually edge or gradient information is captured that represents your features uh, these days um, deep features have already replaced all these uh, local descriptors or gradient descriptors but when you look at uh, the deep features they are essentially uh, a higher dimensional combination of lot of different kinds of local descriptors so this is a good starting point and once you or if you have already uh, studied the deep learning lecture you would know uh, when you look at the weights that you have learned in the network they represent these uh, gradient directions as well some uh, represent edges some represent corners and so there are these templates already present or learned uh, by training again here for many local feature det uh, detectors um, there are executables available online the first link is a really good link i would uh, request everyone to just take a look or browse through for a few minutes or um, and just to take a look at how uh, different descriptors are uh, available okay so the next step is uh, feature matching so until now we have done feature detection uh, and we have learned how we can describe those detected features through uh, histogram binning or even uh, using SIF. we can generate a 128 dimensional feature vector which is a normalized um, collection of histogram of uh, gradients and um, uh, using the dominant histogram uh, dominant gradient in the particular um, window size that you selected there is always can be an argument made that you can increase the window size to increase uh, more feature uh, points and things like that and of course a lot of uh, successive work after this uh, shift has focused on that um, and so you can look look it up so in the book of Sigzaleski you can also there there are uh, some examples given about this successive works and if you are interested you can just uh, take a look at there it's maybe 10-15 minutes read up matching so what do you do is once you we have the feature vectors how do we match how do we compare them what are the different metrics involved in comparison how do we find the correspondences between these features detected across uh, different images that's what we are doing in matching um, let's say in the left hand image you you detect these features uh, green and 
right and on the right you find equivalent matching uh, features in, in the image so uh, these distances are basically the equilibrium distances in the feature space so when you detect this feature and you describe it using a shift or any other descriptor uh, you generate a vector or a matrix which you can use for direct computation of l2 distance between this feature as well as this um, features and the ones which are closer are basically um, give you a good feature match this is quite straightforward the problem comes in what if um, what if the in, in case of the red for example with green it's quite easy because there is a huge difference almost two times the distance uh, it's easy to discard the the feature which is uh, at a higher distance so it, it's clearly not ma uh, a good match but with the uh, red one the values here mentioned on the right hand side are are uh, quite near it is um, the distances computed are uh, 0 0.34 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 so it's difficult to decide which one is the actual match so what do we do here so there are certain criteria when we compute the distance uh, in the feature space um, yeah we decide a threshold above which everything else we will uh, neglect and there will be no match but the problem is as I as I said the threshold is hard to pick and non distinctive features could have a lot of close matches and only one of which is correct so for a given particular feature you can have a lot of matches which are close in, in, in terms of distance <laughs> so what do we do in this case uh, so uh, this is a technique uh, uh, adopted by uh, David Lowe in his paper of uh, shift descriptor. What he does is he computes the nearest neighbor uh, distances of the first and the second key, uh, uh, nearest uh, key points matched. And if this ratio is uh, almost one, then basically these two points, it's difficult to differentiate between these two points. And uh, either of them could be an actual match. Whereas, if there is a huge difference between these two, um, then uh, this ratio tends to be zero. So, uh, you, give, you get a better uh, handle or a better way of um, discarding the uh, features which are not uh, a match. And when you sort by this ratio uh, across all the features that you have matched, they, then you get a probability distribution basically. So you get a pro, uh, PDF a probability distribution function of these raci ratios across 40,000 key points. And when you plot them across like this for the correct matches, you will get a peak of sorts. But whereas for incorrect matches, it, it will traditionally, uh, it will usually give you uh, a graph like this. And it's easy to select the key point here in this case, when you have selected the, um, the correct uh, feature. And, and that's it from um, feature detection perspective and uh, in the next uh, lecture we are going to talk a little bit away from the topic because in the during the exercises a lot of people have complained that um, we have not discussed about singular value uh, decomposition so the next uh, video will be a short um, how do you say a short um, departure from our flow but it's also a welcome departure because in the next uh, lecture we are going to start talking about camera optics which is basically we are jumping into real world um, uh, geometry and how to model the real world uh, through geometrical uh, perspective and so i think it's a good uh, pause and um, we talk about singular value decomposition and then uh, after that we start talking about camera and optics until then see you